country's largest iron ore miner, NMDC, hiked prices by as much as 13% last month. This despite dispatches falling over the past few months as demand has remained muted. To talk about the future of both prices and demand, we're joined today by TRK Rao, Commercial Director at NMDC. Good morning, Mr. Rao. Thank you very much for speaking with us today. Uh, let me start by asking you for your outlook on prices. I was just reading a Bloomberg article which suggests that the curbs that China has put on some of its steel factories, etc., uh, suggest that iron ore may be entering a bull market and that we could see substantial price gains from here on. Would you agree? Yeah, good morning. First of all, thank you very much. If you see the domestic demand, the domestic demand has been quite good this year compared to last year. The steel consumption has been grown around 4.1%. And then all our customers, especially the Vizac steel plant, the SR, they are doing very well. They are in double digit growth, more than 25%. So there is quite very good demand in the domestic market because of the good demand in domestic market and also considering that our competitors like the Orissa miners have increased prices. We have increased our uh, prices in the month of December. And if you see our sales in the first six months, we have done record sales, the best ever sales in the history of NMDC. That's primarily because of the good domestic demand. And in the coming months also, the sales will be very good. You said that there has been some decline in sales, but that primarily happened in the month of October due to an accident on the KK line that has pulled down our sales and it, uh, it has nothing to do with our uh, demand. As far as the price are concerned, yes, the price outlook remains quite positive. The Chinese mills are in a very stronger position. The margins, the HRC and the rebar prices have gone substantially high. And even the low-cost mills are in the order of around $270 per ton mill margins. Down the lane, the, given the sintering cuts and the rebalancing in supply and the supply side cuts, I think the outlook for prices globally and domestic looks to be quite positive. Uh, could you give us some idea of how much more room there is for prices to move up here based on both those two factors that you've just described, which is uh, buoyant demand domestically and a conducive price environment globally? As you know, it's very difficult to hazard a guess on exact numbers, but they would be range bound. Now, I think in uh, four or five dollars range, um, the international prices could be there uh, and compared to the current levels of prices. And uh, NMDC price also, yes, we also see a, a good outlook in the coming months. Mm. What about volumes, Mr. Rao? Good morning, because if I look at your production and dispatch figures, uh, they have come off from the levels that they were at at the start of the calendar or even November and December 2016 uh, or 27, yeah, 2016. Uh, why is this happening and what's the outlook there? Yeah, as I had explained to you in to your earlier question, the volumes have come down primarily because of the evacuation issue on our KK line. That's our major uh, transportation of iron ore line. And there, there has been a major accident. Now that will be over uh, on December 12th and there will be normal movement of uh, railway rakes. This will definitely uh, push up our sales, and we are hoping to make up. And last year we did uh, in this uh, second half, around 18 million tons, and we hope to do the same thing and uh, beat the last year uh, record. Last year we did 35.6 million tons. This year we hope to end up at 36, mil uh, 36 million tons. And you would reckon that with all of those issues out of the way, uh, the year after this would probably see a substantial growth over FY18. Is it possible to predict that? Yeah, uh, yeah we see a robust uh, demand, especially from our uh, customers, because RNL has expanded, the Zindal have also expanded. 18 19 will be definitely a very good uh, year for us. And we also have all the production capacity to catch up with the demand. Uh, one question on this steel project of yours as well, Al almost, I mean, at least the couple of brokerage notes that I read, including the one that came out yesterday, uh, did mention about uh, how while it's delayed, uh, once it starts, it will be a highly profitable venture for you and could be a key component of uh, what happens to your profits going ahead as well. Any timelines that you would want to share, any numbers that you would want to share about what does this steel plant once commission do to your top line, bottom line numbers? No, that would be very difficult to say right now because we also have to factor in a lot of raw material costs. No, it will not be. But the advantage of this Naganda steel plant is it's location-wise, strategically located. It has a link with iron ore mines. 
So in terms of geographic location, it's quite in a well strategically placed. So we, we look forward that will be very cost competitive in a very competitive steel industry. And does it start off, sir? I mean, any timelines there are? Yeah, it's going to start. We have now our uh, primary focus is on commissioning this Nagarna steel plant. We are fast tracking it and we would like to commission it in the first half of next year. Mr. Rao, uh, you are currently running, according to some brokerage reports, you are currently running at what, 80% capacity in your minds and they are hopeful that you should be able to take that to 100% in the next couple of years. Would that be a fair estimate? I should uh, be, say around 90 to 95% would be our uh, capacity utilization. Because so, we have an issue of the Supreme Court ban in uh, Karnataka. Though we have capacity, there is a cap on the production capacity in Karnataka. So we would be able to achieve the 100% uh, capacity there. So what is uh, what is the plan in being able to then access more mines if once you've hit 100% capacity, uh, you know, or 95% capacity, let's assume factoring in the Supreme Court ban, uh, in the next few years, in being able to I expand your mining operations? Yes, if you if you ask, I mean, if I can tell you the state-wise, Karnataka, we are around 12 million tons. Hmm. If the Supreme Court ban is lifted, it would go up to 14 million tons. Right. In Banadilla, that right. is in Chhattisgarh, we are on 27 million tons, but we have capacity to go up to 37 million tons. Okay. And down the lane in 21, 22, okay. our plants are to produce 67 million tons. And, and all of this without being able to access newer mines, is that fair to ask? Now, I know that there were certain mines that were supposed to go up for auction, uh, you know, this year or next year uh, for the private sector. But uh, what is your mine expansion plan besides the capacity expansion plan for existing mines that you've described? All the 67 million tons would primarily come from our existing greenfield as well as brownfield mines. Right. And we have got leases for all these mines. And so the extra anything beyond 67, we have to we are planning to acquire in Orissa and Karnataka, either through auctions or through government dispensation. Deal. So that's exactly my question, sir. Uh, is that you know that plan to acquire for the mines? Uh, you know, can you give us some idea of? what the potential timeline is over the next five years for that, what kind of mining uh, you know, options are you looking for, uh, when will all of this happen, any details that you can give us on that front? Uh, as you are aware, actually these mines allocation now is completely done through auctions. And right. the commercial mining auctions, in, I don't know how begun in Karnataka. We did participate, but we didn't uh, succeed. And we also participated in Orissa. So there are two routes under which NMDC can get its mines. One is auction route, another is allocation route. When auctions comes, wherever the mine is good, we are participating. And we are, and we are also trying with the various state governments for allocation also. And in fact, we are uh, uh, plan to uh, 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 approach Karnataka government and Orissa government for allocation of mines. And what are the chances that you might get any? And which specific mines are you looking at? What kind of capacities would they have? In Karnataka? No, those we are still in discussion. Yeah, we, are, we, are, we are only uh, talking to the state government. We will give you the exact details as the days go. Okay, so at, at full capacity of current mining uh, abilities, you said you'd be at about 67 million tons, correct, sir? In the next two, three years? Yes. Okay, and then right. thereafter, in the course of the next two, three years, you will have to either acquire or be allocated for the mines. You're saying when it comes to allocation, you're already talking to the Karnataka and Orissa governments for allocation of mines. When it comes to acquiring mines in the auction process, and what's the schedule for mine auction from here on? Because certain mine auctions were delayed or cancelled because of not enough demand at that point in time? No, actually, the mines are again coming up for auction. Right. Now we have to wait and see when the government notifies it. And another state what we are targeting is the Jharkhand state, which I for allocation like of mine for allocation allocation. allocation. Yeah. For allocation of mines. So you're looking for mines to be allocated in Karnataka, Orissa and Jharkhand. Uh, can you give us any idea of the details of what kind of mines uh, you might get your hands on from these three states? What how they may add to capacity? Now, primarily we focus on the viability because we conduct detailed exploration mm -hmm. and based on that we zero in on a particular mine. It all depends on various factors. So it was, um, we have to identify the viable deposits. So in Jharkhand also we are progressing. In Karnataka also similar way we are progressing and in Orissa also we are progressing in similar way.
Okay, a quick final question from mine, sir. There was some delay or uh, cancellation of mining auctions uh, in the recent past because there was not enough demand. Do you think that's likely to change next year? What is your assessment of when the government might be able to auction mines and what your participation or participation from the private sector is likely to look at if this comes next year since it's going to come on the back of a good year for both our iron ore demand and uh, you know, for steel production? Yeah, you see, it all depends on what particular mine is coming for auction mm -hmm. and how it suits a particular uh, industry. So it's very difficult to say, suppose a particular industry would be close to that particular mine and in logistic terms, and otherwise also the mine quality of the ore is very good, then they may bid aggressively for this. So these factors do vary depending on which type of mine is coming for action. Uh, we, we cannot uh, just uh, say in a uh, uh, general way that uh, this particular mine is good, uh, which particular mine is not good. You have to look at uh, from a holistic perspective. But there was some identification of the mines that were likely to come up, right, sir? So wouldn't you know already what kind of mines, which mines would specifically come up for auction next year? But they need to be notified, no? Okay. Uh, the, once the state government notifies, then we will have all the exploration data available with us. Based on that, we will take a call. Okay, so my question being this, that, uh, you know, and I'm taking a slightly more medium to longer term outlook, uh, all the efforts the government has made to help the domestic steel industry revive, uh, you know, have paid off in terms of better demand, etc. for you, definitely in the short term. What is the medium to long term outlook? Uh, do you believe that you will have to go in for aggressive mine acquisition over the next year or two to be able to augment capacity because you believe that the demand outlook is going to be very robust for the next few years. Yes, that's what we are planning. Considering the national steel policy, which targets 300 million tons of steel by 2031 32. Hmm. So, we also plan to expand our mining capacity. That's why we are going beyond Chhattisgarh, Karnataka to Jagant, Orissa, and other states. All right. Fair enough, Mr. Rao. Thank you very much uh, for sharing with us all those details thank this morning. Uh, and thank you for your views on Bloomberg Quint.